Headlight Revolution, we have been patiently waiting for Morimoto to release the Tundra LED headlights, and they're finally here. And in this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to get them installed, how all the wiring works, and more importantly, what these things look like compared to the halogen headlights that came in your truck. So let's check them out. So the first step in getting these headlights installed is removing the old ones. And to do that, you're going to need a 10 millimeter socket and a flat screwdriver or a similar pry tool. We've got four bolts to remove from the grill, and we've got these two plastic push pins on the left and right side. So let's get these bolts out of the way. Now with a flat screwdriver or a pry tool, whatever you've got at home, go ahead and remove these plastic clips right here. The rest of it comes out just like so. Do that on the left and right side and set those off to the side. Now the easiest way to pull the front grill off this truck is to take your fingertips and lift up on the top part and that'll release it from these plastic bosses here that the bolts thread into. And at that point, you can reach down here, and if the truck hasn't been taken apart before, it's going to be a little tough. Reach in here and just pull it toward you. It'll pop right off, set it off to the side. So we're back to the flat screwdriver. Go ahead and pull these two plastic pins out. Just reach in, pop the center out, just like the ones for the grill. And we'll set those off to the side. At this point, this plastic piece here is going to come off, and it just clips in along here. So if you pull it toward you gently, you'll be able to release it from the truck, like so. Now, we've got a 10 millimeter bolt to remove right here. We've got two bolts to remove up top. We've got one here and one here. Now, there's a similar trick to pulling this headlight as there was doing the grill. If you lift up on these plastic mounting spots, and pull them away from where the bolt threads in. The headlight will release itself. There's a little bracket down here too that you make sure you want to clear. There we go. And now we can see the wiring on the back side. Go ahead and unplug all of this. Go ahead and press in on the tab on each of these to remove them. This one actually just pulls toward you. Now if you've got a vehicle equipped with a factory LED headlights, it might look a little different back here for you. You might just have one big plug to deal with. This truck in particular has the halogen headlights and so we've got uh, this assortment of plugs. This is the electric adjustable motor for the headlight adjustment inside the vehicle. And then over here is our turn signal. So press down on that, pull it toward you. Go ahead and release the wire harness from the headlight itself. You can use a screwdriver to make this easier or you can grab it with the pliers whatever works and now we can finally pull the headlight away from the vehicle we've got a lot of experience with these morimoto housings on the channel here at headlight revolution and honestly one thing that you see consistently with them is a very sharp and distinct beam pattern and they accomplish that with these multiple projectors in the housing the super duty's got like eight of them f-150's got four per side it produces a very, very distinct clean cutoff line that you see on modern vehicles. If you've been driving around with this, you know that all you've got up front is a smudge of halogen light. And honestly, the OEM LED headlights, while they look a little bit cooler and they've got that LED DRL, they're not a tremendously beautiful beam pattern. They don't look great. They don't have a very distinct cutoff line. It is still kind of a blur of light down the road. Now, Morimoto using these two inner projectors create a low beam and then they use this third projector on the inside to create the high beam and it's going to give you a nice distinct cutoff line on the wall more importantly in traffic you're going to see the light exactly where you need it and not blinding oncoming traffic as you'd see with a conventional plug and play led kit you've also got the option to do a sequential turn signal using the jumper wire in the back or a more usual on and off turn signal so can't wait to get these things installed this truck needed them. It had the chrome housings before. They did not look good. This truck's already blacked out. Let's get these blacked out housings installed and see how they perform. So the way these headlight housings ship is they come with a harness for the factory LED equipped models. And this particular truck came with halogen. So we're going to go ahead and unplug this jumper harness. 
because we're gonna need it to plug into our stock H4 connector right here. Heading back to the truck, go ahead and plug your factory headlight connector in. The adjustable headlight motor plugs in like so. I love that that drops right in. You don't need to swap this off of your old headlight and onto the new one like some other headlight companies out there. That's no fun for anybody. We've got our single T10 connector here for the marker light and that plugs in like so. And we've got our turn signal connector which plugs in just like so. I love how each of these click together real nice. I don't have to worry about them coming apart. As you can see, I can pull on it. It's not going to dislodge itself as I'm going down the highway. I'm not going to lose turn signal. That's very important. Now we're almost completely ready to reinstall this headlight. When you do so, be mindful of this single connector down here. This is our DRL harness connector, and if your truck doesn't have the LED headlights from the factory, you will need to do a fuse tap. I'm going to show you how to do that and how to run that wiring, and more importantly, how to plug it in. But you can go ahead and rest the headlight back in the truck right now. We'll do that harness next. Now, head on over to the driver's side of the truck, and you're going to see the fuse box here just above the battery. Go ahead and press in on this tab to remove the lid. And we've got a single 10 millimeter fuse down here that we're gonna end up removing. It's this isolated one that's kind of off on its own here. Go ahead and grab onto it with a needle nose pliers like so. Remove the fuse and install your fuse tap in the same slot that it came out of. Just like that. Now you can take the wiring and just run it off to the side here. The fuse box lid will close over it just fine. There we go. Now you'll notice on this fuse tap harness that we've got two different plugs running off of it. One is a lot shorter than the other. That one goes to the driver's side headlight. The longer one runs over the passenger side. It's up to you how you want to run that wiring. Uh, in the past, I've gone across here. There's this foam above the radiator. You can zip tie alongside the radiator up top, or you can follow the horn wiring down in the front here. It kind of depends on the grill and whether or not you've got any other add-ons installed. But for now, I'm just going to run along front, pass it through. I'm going to follow existing wiring whenever possible. And I'll run back through after I'm done here and zip tie this up real nice so it looks clean. But for now, I want to get everything installed and make sure everything works properly. Go ahead and connect this to that single connector on the back of the headlight that I showed you earlier. Might be easier to just pop the headlight back out if you've already got it installed. Go ahead and plug it in just like so. And install the headlight. Now once again, this step is just if you don't have the DRLs from the factory. If you do, that supplied jumper harness that was installed in the headlight will work just fine. So with our DRL harness ran and everything plugged in, I'm gonna go ahead and power these up, make sure my low beam works, make sure my high beam works, and turn signal. And if everything's great, I'm gonna button the truck up, point it against the wall, and I'm gonna show you guys what you're gonna get compared to stock with the Morimoto X BLED headlight. So we've got our Tundra pulled in the studio now, and we've got our stock low beam here pointed at the wall from about 20 feet. You already knew this, these headlights aren't great. We came out with 410 Lux, that's our usable light output firing down the road. Honestly, this is nothing to write home about. There's not a whole lot of light left to right, not a whole light up and down. It doesn't look great. Let's see what we can do with the OEM LED headlights. Now this is what people are really comparing the Tundra Morimoto headlights to. This is the OEM LED headlight that you can get from the factory and they produce 960 lux. Now compared to stock, this is way better, but honestly it's not the cleanest beam pattern. It is brighter, it's about twice as bright, but let's see what the Morimoto headlights do for us in this Tundra. Now as you can see we've got a distinct cutoff line. This thing looks absolutely beautiful left to right. We've got all kinds of flood. We've got no glare up above, we're not going to be flashed by oncoming traffic, and this picked up 1,170 lux, which compared to OEM LED at 960, and more importantly compared to stock at only 410, this is a tremendous upgrade for your Tundra. Now let's check out high beam. Now here's our stock high beam, and the stock high beam is actually pretty decent. It came out at 780 lux, we've got some brightness, but honestly, you're not watching this video to look at the stock high beam. Now let's see what the OEM LED high beam looks like. 
Now, I'm gonna be honest here, the OEM LED headlights from Toyota have a tremendous high beam. It is punchy, it is exactly where you want it, and I'm just being honest with you guys, I'm not gonna mislead you at all. It is the best high beam we've ever tested for the Toyota Tundra. If you're planning on needing a high beam frequently enough to justify doing the OEM LED headlights, might not be a bad way to go. Let's check out the Morimoto LED headlights. Now these came in at 1,470 lux. Still a tremendous upgrade over stock, which was only 780. And when I say stock, I'm talking about stock halogen headlights. And the OEM LED headlights may have came in at 2650, but honestly, these Morimotos are not a bad upgrade. You got the style points up front. It's a beautiful blacked out housing. And honestly, it is a punchy high beam anyways. Now, as you can see, the combination of the Morimoto XB LED headlights on this Tundra, as well as the XB LED fog lights we also installed, are a tremendous improvement over stock. Not only just visually, they completely changed the look of the truck, but output-wise, these things are insanely bright compared to stock. They give it that nice modern cutoff line, and man, did they look good on the road. Now, if there's anything else you need for your Tundra at all, if these just aren't enough light for you, we've got like four other videos dedicated to auxiliary lighting on the Toyota Tundra. We've got the Diode Dynamics Stage Series light bars in the grill. We've got the NSV Night Rider light bar in the hood bulge, which has been one of our best-selling products for the Tundra for a long time. I'd love to show them to you. Visit our website, headlightrevolution.com. Thanks for watching.